Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And I love the fact that we're back to talking about business, but, you know, everything that's been going on in the world, that silly little pandemic is still going to creep in. I have corona hair. <sighs> I do, too. My <laughs> wife cut my hair and she did not know how it kept getting this is actually two weeks of growth oh uh, she did not know she got how. you a little close yeah yeah no i i you know i was a kid when i last had hair. <laughs> you know it's it was easier right really easy yeah. to take care of and still is for for quite a while yeah i just i don't I, the, the, I don't mind mine getting longer it's the fact that there's some different colors that are in there <laughs> um you know it's like oi 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 but but yeah you know we all have COVID hair right now, right? You know, it's just kind of one of those things. And when I see somebody who's had their hair cut, I'm like, mm -hmm. how'd you do that? And, and usually it is, you know, they had somebody they either knew or they tried it themselves or, you know, whatever, or they snuck out. Um, it, here in, in Georgia, um, it's been something that people have been able to do for quite a while, but for safety reasons, many places have chosen not to. Um, and part of what we're gonna be talking about is, is safety for businesses, kind of this post-corona, post-COVID, post-whatever we wanna call it era, because even though the the germ might go away, there's going to be changes that will be made. And so it's going to be great fun and very interesting to be talking with my guest, Evan Hackle, about that. So welcome, Evan. Great to be here. Thank you. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we'll jump into this. So Evan Hackle is a founder and business development executive of Delta Payment Solutions and Delta Payment Cooperative, merchant processing organizations. Hackle is a training and leadership consultant, keynote speaker, profit builder, and author. Before founding Dental and leading Tortle Training and Image Consulting, he spent 20 years on the top executive team at CCA Global Partners, where he led four international business divisions with more than 2,000 units that earned more than five billion with a B in sales. Evan wrote the highly successful book, Engaging Leadership, 21 Steps to Elevate Your Business. And I didn't read your book, which just means we have to have you on some other time to talk about that. So I, I again, would actually, I just barely came out with a new book. Ah. That's the one. It's engaging Leadership um, meets the younger generation. And it's engaged with an I, by the way, for involvement. Right. So right. People look, it's I and not E-N. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which is why I kind of paused for a moment when I was reading it. It was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could understand. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so again, welcome. Um, it's always fun to welcome someone who is part of C-Suite Network. You are a C-Suite advisor and we are part of the C-Suite Network. So, you know, that's always great fun. It's, it's a, a, a great organization. And I always remind people, you know, it's not just for the extremely high level, high income. It's for the small business owners who have the same issues. We just have them on a much smaller scale, but we, you know, we all want to grow and we want to become bigger companies. And so it's great to, to be a part of an organization that, that shares so much great knowledge. Yeah. And if you want to get bigger and better, you want to be around people that are more successful right. than you. Right. Oh, right? Yeah. And you want, you want to you grow by learning mm -hmm. and you learn from others. Mm -hmm. right. uh, it's, it's a great organization. Mm -hmm. and, real, and this whole pandemic has really highlighted their value. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, really and, highlighted their value. Well, and they've added a bunch of different things and, you know, we'll, we'll let people go explore those on their own. But, you know, and we always encourage people to look at all of the other programs, all of the other resources that they have at, at C-Suite. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit and tell us how it is that you got to where you are today. Well, I love that question. Um, all by accident, but worked out just perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was, you know, uh, I worked in a family business. Okay. And our family business was a member of a cooperative. Mm -hmm. And um, when I decided to leave and go out on my own, I met uh, this gentleman, Howard Brodsky, and mm -hmm. he was in the process of launching a cooperative in the floor covering business. Mm -hmm. And so he and I started talking and I love the cooperative business model a lot. Right. And um, we had an amazing run. The entire company, not just the parts that I ran, but the mm -hmm. entire company, um, we grew in 20 years to 10 billion in system-wide sales, mm. average growth rate of 29% a year. There are mm -hmm. very few companies that can say that. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that I learned in a cooperative is that when businesses combine their efforts, they can buy things a lot cheaper including credit card processing. Right. And so one of the things I started the company was just cooperatively buying business services, including mm -hmm. credit card. Mm -hmm. So when I started looking at the credit card world, I had this, oh, you need to have a cooperative because when people join the cooperative, the cooperative legally can negotiate on behalf of all of its members mm -hmm. and it can buy its buying power. Right. Where otherwise people have to buy with their own buying power. Mm -hmm. And it you know, just makes sense that if you combine a bunch of merchants together, the processes are going to take you mm -hmm. much more seriously, both for better pricing, better service, all of those things. Right. Um, so that's what led me to Delta. And mm -hmm. um, Delta, by the way, we chose the name for change because we're, you know, oh. we're changing mm -hmm. the whole processing world, which mm -hmm. is very dysfunctional. Right. You know, and I'm from the Midwest, and so I'm familiar with co-ops, but they were farmer co-ops. Um, but, you know, obviously the same concept. You know, you could have your little bitty people who had no power to negotiate at all. You got the maximum price, the minimum for all of that, you know, all those various things. But when you started combining that that was where you could then really leverage, um, you know, and, and that is the, the concept be behind what you're doing. Yeah. A lot of people don't know a lot about co-ops. So there are actually 40,000 in the United States. Wow. Um, almost every major franchise system has a co-op. Oh, okay. Um, or some kind of buying group. Mm -hmm. um, and because they can buy better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Burger King their franchisees get together and mm -hmm. they buy food and they buy business services. Right. Same with Dunkin' Donuts. And it doesn't matter, you know, what the, the product is, they can form cooperatives mm -hmm. and some form buying groups. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference between a cooperative and a buying group. Mm. A cooperative and a buying group can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Meaning the buying group can buy on behalf of all of its members, just like mm -hmm. a co-op. Mm -hmm. The difference is a co-op is literally owned by its members. Right. So there is no, uh, there's no friction there. So in a mm -hmm. buying, in a buying group, you're always wondering, you know, is management worrying about themselves mm -hmm. and their profitability? Or are they worrying about the members of the co-op mm -hmm. or members of the buying group rather right. in a co-op there it's symbiotic. And that's mm -hmm. why I love co-ops because co-ops really have the best interest of its members at mm -hmm. heart. Right. You know, and it makes sense that buying in bulk maybe is the easiest way to, to do that and processing things in in bulk is going to to get you some some cost benefits you know if you buy 10 of something you might have to pay ten dollars each if you buy a thousand well then you knock that down to a dollar each you know or, or whatever um yeah. because it's it's easier to mass produce um you know and, and that's what we're talking about is something that is used by many you know we're not talking about buying a lamborghini you know there's a reason you buy one lamborghini at a time <laughs> you know, don't yeah, we i'd love to see a lamborghini buying group I uh, but i i, I want to i do want to I don't know, correct, but I want to clarify something you said. Yes. Cooperatives are actually used by very big companies too. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, you think of cooperatives helping small businesses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there's a, uh, there's a cooperative called Popco, mm -hmm. which you probably never heard of, mm -hmm. and it's made up of grocery stores. Oh, okay. And, and their it's, average it's the member, mm -hmm. they have, their average member does $3.5 billion in sales. Wow. And so they have brands like Wegmans, Ralph's, mm -hmm. um, Wiggly Piggly, Dixie. I don't know all the brands, but mm -hmm. they're, they're all, almost all of the 
not quite Safeway, not quite Walmart, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. But but they're still big guys. Mm -hmm. Three point five billion average mm -hmm. times sixty five members. Mm -hmm. They now have the buying clout. Mm -hmm. So they're even though they're billion dollar entities, mm -hmm. they still don't buy as well as a Walmart does, right. or a Safeway or Kroger, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. you know the bigger the mm -hmm. big 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 players. So very large companies. I mean, we can save money for people in our co-op that are doing you know hundreds of millions in processing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, someone's processing a billion or more. They probably our co-op isn't the right fit because mm -hmm. they have enough clout on their mm -hmm. own may not have enough know-how. Right. It's, it's not just, you know, in the credit card processing business, there are two elements that are important. Mm -hmm. One is having leverage so you can negotiate. Okay. But the other is knowing what you need to buy and who you need to buy it from. Mm -hmm. And it's totally dysfunctional. Uh, and there are hundreds of places to buy from. And people don't realize because you're know, processing and processing. Mm -hmm. That is not actually correct. There are people that process differently that are looking for different kinds of customers. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is consistent is they all want to sell you. Right. Some are well suited to sell you, some are not. Mm -hmm. But what will happen is if you're not well suited, if your business model isn't well suited, you'll ask somebody, hey, give me you know, some credit card statements and maybe they can save a little bit of money where somebody else could save you a lot of money, mm -hmm. but they, they just want your business a little bit and if you don't know any better, they'll still take your business. Right. So it's really knowing, and that's the difficulty for a business is who has the time to do the research? Right. Who has the time mm -hmm. to really understand the market and where to and get the And who do they even for. ask? Yeah. And I, I was amazed. I mean, I was talking to somebody that was buying four or five billion dollars worth of processing, and they absolutely on their own could negotiate better than they were, but mm -hmm. they were way overpaying for their right. processing. And they were way overpaying for their processing not because they didn't have clout, but really because they didn't have knowledge mm -hmm. and they didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. And so they were, you know, they were, you know, probably paying 50% more than they had to for their wow. process. Which came to thousands of dollars. No, millions. Millions. Of <laughs> thousands of dollars a day. <laughs> um, yeah, a yeah. lot, a lot of money. Well, you know, I think probably one of the first things that, that many small business owners think is they just don't process enough. Is there, you know, now granted, I mean, if you sell $10 worth a month, it's probably not worth <laughs> processing. But, you know, if you're doing, you know, a certain amount per month, does it make sense to explore credit card processing? Well, so... There are processors out there, a Stripe, a PayPal, right. mm -hmm. a Square, mm -hmm. uh, that are really designed well for someone that is looking for super convenience, mm -hmm. um, going to pay a premium, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not doing enough volume. Right. And, and, and the fact is that that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we all uh, know we can call and get the little thing or we can set up a PayPal account. Ooh, that's easy. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is easy. Now, there are some bugaboos, and I, I'll take a second mm -hmm. and explain that in mm -hmm. a second. Um, but um, generally speaking, to work with us, you've really got to be processing at least a half a million a year. Okay. Because, you know, the, the time and effort to change, you need to have enough savings to change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's either that or if you're planning to about to grow. Okay. Then it makes sense to plan for your grow. Because mm -hmm. what can happen is, and I'll give you an, a, a, a real life example, is a business was doing very well. They were using PayPal mm -hmm. and they had a big blip in their business. And then PayPal decided, oh, well, we don't want to give you all your money. We're going to hold on to $150,000 oh. of your money to protect us. So this is worth talking about because mm -hmm. I think people don't understand this. Right. They There's think PayPal is a pass through almost that yeah yes they're going to charge you a fee because they're processing it but i don't think it ever occurred to anybody that paypal could go you know what we're just going to keep some of that yeah and i, I want to explain why there are two parts of the transaction mm -hmm. one part of the transaction is the money that the 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 banks get that issue the credit card okay so if i don't pay the credit card bill or, or deb you don't pay your credit card bill the bank that issued they're on the hook for that right Okay. Now there are all kinds of different rates from those people based on all your bennies. Mm -hmm. 
right? So if you have a card where you get two miles for every transaction or whatever, mm -hmm. there's going to be a higher cost for that card mm -hmm. than a card that doesn't have any. Right. But on the other side of the transaction is the processor. Mm -hmm. The processor actually guarantees the fulfillment of the order. Mm. So let's just say, for instance, and this is kind of funny because this is true. I ordered a haircutting thing online. Mm -hmm. It's been 45 days. I still haven't gotten it. Oh, it's uh, been kind I, of popular. Yeah, well, it is kind of popular, but they haven't communicated about it. Mm -hmm. So I haven't taken the time yet, but I'm going to mm -hmm. contact PayPal, which is who mm -hmm. I bought it through. Mm -hmm. And PayPal, if that company was a fly-by-night company mm -hmm. and has absconded with the money, mm -hmm. would give me my money back because the product was never delivered. Right. But PayPal would be responsible. Mm -hmm. so right, the because they're out that money. Mm -hmm. Right. The processor's worry is that a company that they're processing doesn't provide service, doesn't provide goods, mm -hmm. and then they come back and they want, um, they want their money back, mm -hmm. and then the processor has to pay. Mm -hmm. So in the case of this company with the blip, what they said is, we're, we're at risk that people are gonna want refunds, and your volume went way up, we don't know why. Mm -hmm. They could be, in this case, it was no issue, but in, in and, uh, you know, somebody could use a, their own credit card mm -hmm. and, you know, run their, you know, then you do fraud to, mm -hmm. to, oh, I can't make payroll, I'll run my own credit card. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, that stuff's illegal. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, these processors price based on risk. Mm -hmm. And then when something becomes really risky, so even though you're paying a premium to use PayPal, Stripe, and these people, if they see a blip, they'll shut you off. Mm. And then they'll go to you, well, we're going to hold $150,000 mm -hmm. and then anything over that we'll give to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause and they're then, basically CYA. Yeah. And then, and then, and then here's the thing. You can't reach them. Right. Yeah. You there's can leave them there's an no email. people that work there. <laughs> you can leave them an email mm -hmm. and pray that mm -hmm. they're going to call you back. Right. And sometimes it can take weeks. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where Delta really comes into ha comes in handy mm -hmm. is because we have relationships with the top people. Mm. So when there's a problem and sometimes there can be problems, mm -hmm. we can go in and solve it. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you another real life story is one of our very first clients had a reserve of one and a quarter million dollars with their processor. Mm -hmm. And that's because they were with the wrong kind of processor. Mm. The processor, see, each processor has specialties of areas where they understand the risk. Mm. So when they don't understand the risk, mm -hmm. they tend to want reserves and higher right. fees. Right. Because, because more, they, more CYA. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 exactly. So the key is to find the right processor mm -hmm. that understands the business somebody's in. Mm. So we were able to lower their rates mm -hmm. and get no reserve. Mm -hmm. So they were able to get their one and a quarter million dollars back. Wow. Mm -hmm. So now we don't, most clients aren't that big, mm -hmm. but the, the, the point, the point is that it's really important to partner with somebody that really understands the mm -hmm. deal so that you get the best rates and then you don't get stuck, you know, with a reserve. Right. Um, and, and I got to tell you something, when you get an unexpected reserve, mm -hmm. it can destroy, it can put you out of business. Right. In fact, I joke with when I talk to some of the processors and say, you know, when you do this, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy because mm -hmm. you're almost right. going like, to put these people out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they needed of, those funds to operate. Yeah, to pay their payroll, to, to buy the goods, to ship mm -hmm. the goods, mm -hmm. to do all those things. And, and, I, and, you know, and, and I go, you know, they generally surprise people. Mm -hmm. The process, you know, so they have people, you know, they have people that do the due diligence. There's a word for them and I can't think of it. But anyhow... They have the people that do the, the thing. And when they make the decision, there's risk. They, they do it instantly. They don't come to the, to the right. person. They don't say, say, explain this to me. Yeah. They don't come to you and say, look at, you know, we need $150,000 reserve. We're going to keep 10% of your funds until we build it up, mm -hmm. you know, to give you time. They don't, they just collect the money mm -hmm. and then they have the money. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I know people that have literally gone out of business mm -hmm. because of this. Right. Um, so, and I know people are going, well, I don't have any problems. And mm -hmm. 
You may not. You may not ever have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's the thing. When you're, uh, you know, when we talk about half a million in processing and less, if you're using Stripe and these people, and you're, you, you know, you're paying probably a half to three quarters of a percent too much, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money. Right. But it's not, you know, on the scheme of things, it's not a lot of money mm -hmm. in total. They don't care about you. Right. They've got a risk pool because they're yeah, making so, so many. much mm -hmm. money that they can a few, afford to have a few bad apples mm -hmm. here, a few bad apples there. Right. Um, it's when you become bigger in size that they start to really look at you mm -hmm. and, and evaluate your business. And even though they have quote unquote fixed pricing, I've known them to come back to people and say, we're going to charge you more. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of charging you, you know, 2.9 and 40 cents, which is pretty much the going rate, mm -hmm. they're going to come back and say, we're going to charge you 5% mm -hmm. of the risk. Right. You know, and, and a lot of times, you know, you, you mentioned the fact that people don't know, sometimes they don't even pay attention to that. You know, they just, the money comes in, they go, oh, look, we got payment of X number of dollars. And they never stop to, to look at the reporting from the company, um, you know, and, and because again, they don't understand it. They don't, um, they don't know what questions to ask, all of these things. So their rate could have, as you said, gotten bumped up and they didn't even notice. Well, I'll tell you what we find all the time is that people will come in and they will have rates mm -hmm. and um, then the company has a clause saying they can adjust rates mm -hmm. with notice right and they send an email notice in with intentionally obscure right um, it's like a little paragraph yeah yeah it's like a, mm -hmm. oh you're a valued customer mm -hmm. blah 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 the world oh, is this, by the world, way. this world and this and mm -hmm. below the fold in the email is uh -huh. and by the way we're adding this we're adding this fee Mm -hmm. And I've known people that, you know, told me, I know I'm paying this rate. Mm -hmm. And we go in and we see that they're paying 20 or 30 basis points more. Right. Um, which is a ton of extra mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, um, it's really a, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for here? Um, I, well, it's not a scam, but, you know, it's, it's not, as my mother would say, it's not quite kosher. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I would go further, though. I would mm -hmm. say it's unethical right. and, mm -hmm. right. and, and yeah. deceptive. Yeah, because they are giving you that information, you know, and, and so they're fulfilling the, I'm assuming, legal obligations, but they're not making it easy for you to find it and see it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, and how many of those, uh, you know, when you get the emails, you don't even read them. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, oh, look, we got a new terms of service, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and, and, or as you said, you might, you know, you read the, what's above the fold, you know, and, and so that's what you see first on your screen. And that is where they put all the glow in, you're such a valued customer and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and you're like, oh, isn't that sweet? Click. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's one of those things where, you know, as we were saying, people just don't understand. Um, and, and they do think that they're too small. And so that is obviously why a co-op, a cooperative is the, you know, is, is a great thing because you're combining resources, people, knowledge, all of that. So tell us more about how that, that operates. So a co-op works where the customers are considered men members and they are the literal owners. Okay. And so what happens is that you join the cooperative. It's, mm -hmm. it's not expensive to join the cooperative. And then you have voting rights and mm -hmm. you have equal rights to every other member. Mm -hmm. The profits from the co-op are redistributed to everyone based on their usage. Mm. So if I'm big and I got big volume, my you percentage get more profit. is bigger than if, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm smaller. Right. As the, as the co-op, so the co-op has the benefits of combining and buying power and negotiation mm -hmm. power, um, which, is, which you know, helps people get lower rates. Mm -hmm. But it also has a benefit as it grows and gets bigger, it's more efficient. Mm, its right. cost of management mm -hmm. goes down. Mm -hmm. So the share of the, of the profit the co-op makes and mm -hmm. the distribution back to the members mm -hmm. becomes bigger. Right. So, you know, right now we pay out 50% 
but it soon will be 55, mm. it'll be 60. Mm -hmm. the, the percentage is incremental and keeps growing nice. as the co-op gets mm -hmm. bigger. So there's big benefits for people to, to want to really support the co-op right. and, and, uh, and to encourage other people. Mm -hmm. You know, most of our members come as a referral from another co-op member. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. You know, and, and it's not just that you're getting a better rate. I mean, there, there's equipment. And so again, there's cost of scale with equipment. When you're buying more of the processing equipment, you pay a lesser fee for it. So then that is passed on. Yeah, it's equipment. It's all these added fees too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's amazing how many fees people get. And if you're a small purchaser, it, it can really eat you up. Right. So, you know, they'll, they'll send you like 30 little fees, $5 here, $12 mm -hmm. here, $25 here. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and by and large, most of our clients don't pay any fees mm. because we just negotiated them all right, the way. Right, right. It's all, it's all basically uh, hidden profit. Mm -hmm. They've got all these crazy names for them, but they don't actually cost the vendor anything. It's a mm -hmm. profit center. Mm -hmm. So there are some times where we can get a lower rate mm -hmm. by paying a small fee mm. that will say to someone, okay, you should do this because ultimately this will save you money. Right. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, we just don't have our members pay any fee other than the fee related directly to the to to mm -hmm. the transaction, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's a lot. There's another part to processing. So we, you know, we've talked about leverage. We talked about knowing the right processor for the right mm -hmm. type of customer. But then there's another element, which is also the technological part. Right. So um, having the right technological mm -hmm. partner, because some people do very integrate. Uh, integrations mm -hmm. into their POS system mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. So, you know, if you have the right partner and you, we know what they are, um, you know, so like, let's just say someone uses Stripe right now mm -hmm. and they want to move on. Well, Stripe's got a lot of great integration tools. We have partners that emulate mm -hmm. those tools mm -hmm. and it, it probably makes sense to go to somebody that would emulate those tools than to have to recreate those tools with someone that doesn't emulate those tools. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what the knowledge base that we bring mm -hmm. is to be able to help people, you know, with, with, with all of those aspects. Right. Um, right. And then when people get bigger and so, you know, you get different levels, but when people get bigger, we'll many times actually have them work with more than one processor. Mm. Um, and in part because processors get nervous mm -hmm. when any one customer is so big. Right. Right. So they so don't want to take a risk. Um, that, you're, yeah, you're spreading out the risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're spreading out the risk, mm -hmm. enabling us to get lower rates by having them use different processors. Mm -hmm. And then we can help them determine which kind of transaction goes to which mm -hmm. processor to minimize their cost. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, most people I'm sure listening right now have never thought of, oh, right. yeah. I could process with multiple processors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and look at it, if you're, a, you know, if you're a under $10 million business, what I just said probably isn't really relevant mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. other than someday you might become bigger. Mm -hmm. And if you're a member of our co-op, you know that you're with a team that's going to really help you mm -hmm. and figure those things out in advance. Mm -hmm. But if you're over 10 million, uh, and it, you know, it depends on what you sell. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll give you a, an example. A restaurant. Mm -hmm. You go and you eat at a restaurant. The average ticket is pretty low. Mm -hmm. So if a customer disputes the bill, it's not for a large amount of money. Right. Okay. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And what's the likelihood someone's going to dispute eating at a restaurant? Pretty low. Pretty low. And, and especially the entire bill. Yeah. Right. So they, they don't get many chargebacks mm -hmm. and the risk is like minuscule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they should and do generally pay, you know, very low rates because mm -hmm. it's very low risk. Right. Uh, now, interestingly enough, there are products like Toast that Toast is interesting because it's not a bad product. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's not for some people, mm -hmm. but Toast requires you to use their credit card processing. Mm -hmm. And the reason they do is mm -hmm. because they're making a ton of money on that credit card process. Mm -hmm because there's so little risk mm -hmm. and they're charging people probably the equivalent of 1% of sales, mm -hmm. but people don't realize they're paying 1% of sales. Right. 
um, when, when they do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you, when you have a product in here, I'll give you an example, uh, air conditioners. Mm-hmm. So you're going to go buy an air conditioner from an air conditioner person. It's mm-hmm. let's say a four or $5,000 purchase and you give them half down. Mm-hmm. So you give them $2,000 for that air conditioner. Mm-hmm. And then that company goes out of business and they've got 300 customers right. that, with $2,000 yeah. down. Mm-hmm. That's a $600,000 exposure mm-hmm. to the processor because the customer is entitled. Mm-hmm. And this, by the way, is one of the reasons why people should use credit cards. Mm-hmm. Right. Because then you, you can get check, your money back. Right. Mm-hmm. You pay with your check. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're out of luck. Yeah. You yeah. You just, you card. just gave them $2,000. That was yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you, if you're, if you pay with a credit card, you have some rights mm-hmm. and the biggest right is non-delivery of goods. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the biggest right. So, um, you know, again, back to my point mm-hmm. is we can really help find the right partner based on the risk profile. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and it is obviously all about the risk and analyzing it. I mean, because there's so many things that go into it. And, and we're not even talking about something like COVID right now. I mean, we're yeah. just talking about, you know, you mentioned air conditioners. Well, you know, maybe there's a bunch of storms that happen. Um, you know, it could oh. be, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that can cause a higher risk that nobody ever even thinks about, or, you know, they don't happen all that often. Yeah, well, I mean, you think about air conditioning, it's somewhat mm-hmm. of a seasonal item, mm-hmm. Yeah. right? So they're probably, depending on what part of the country they're mm-hmm. in, obviously, but I'm, I live in the Northeast and mm-hmm. I suspect they don't sell a lot of air conditioners in January. Right. So a processor is looking and their volume is low, 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 mm-hmm. and then it spikes. Right. And, and then, then the, back and down then the processor mm-hmm. comes in and says, hold on. Yeah. Wait a we're minute. Gonna, we're going to mm-hmm. retain some, we're going to retain mm-hmm. some of this money. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, everything depends on your relationship with the processor, mm-hmm. how many years you've been with the processor. Um, but processors are, you know, they're, you know, it's, it's, you know, I remember when I was younger, mm-hmm. processing was simple. Mm-hmm. And processing, by the way, is not going to get simpler. It's only going to get more complicated. Right. Mm-hmm. But, and, you know, you paid a single flat fee. Mm-hmm. There were no reward cards. Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't really, as far as I know, price versus on risk much at all. No. But they got more sophisticated. Mm-hmm. And um, in some ways, I mean, it's fair. In the mm-hmm. point of view that if you have lower risk, you pay lower rates. If you have mm-hmm. higher risk, you pay higher rates. Right. And, and that and, you know, it's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. it per se. Uh, but the key, the key is just to how do you, you know, no one wants to pay more than they should pay. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and and I think you know, kind of back to the 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 lack of knowledge thing. I mean, there are probably a lot of people who you know are thinking there's really only a couple of choices. There's their bank which, you know, sure, they'll process for you, but there's going to be a pretty hefty fee there. Um, and then there are things like PayPal and Stripe. And maybe they've gone to a networking event where somebody said, hey, you know, we can, we can handle your processing for you. They don't really realize just how many options are out there. Well, it, I, I think it's very true. And I, I grimaced when you said they're bank. Uh, <laughs> because... Um, most banks um, just, you know, credit card processing is a huge profit center for mm-hmm. them. They don't really focus on the business that much. And mm-hmm. what banks generally do is they'll go and say, if you want a loan from us, we want all your business and we want your credit card business. And they right. want your credit card business because mm-hmm. they're going to make a lot of money on your right. credit card yeah. business. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, and look at sometimes you need the loan and sometimes you're going to mm-hmm. pay more for your credit cards because you need the loan. But uh, a local small bank mm-hmm. uh, is typically not the best way to get a credit card. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, or even a big bank. I mean, let's be honest. You know, the, the big dudes of the world, you know, un- unless, again, you have so much money that you've got that leverage, you know, your accounts are so big, they've got their little piece of paper that says, we're going to charge you X amount. They hand it to you and that's it. I mean, you know, they, they don't negotiate. Oh, yeah, no, no. no they, and... Um, they're very risk adverse. Right. The bigger, the Which bigger they bank. should be. I mean, <laughs> because they don't have they don't have the time or expertise mm-hmm. to specialize in an industry and right. focus on an industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, 
you know, again, everything has to do with size. If, if mm -hmm. you're processing a billion dollars, mm -hmm. you're going to get everybody's attention. Yeah. And, you, and, you can say, excuse me, this is what we want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, you, you, you can definitely, you definitely have the clout mm -hmm. and you're and the cost of processing enough that you can have, you know, a team of people that mm -hmm. work on, on your, on your processing right. and you've got enough leverage. Everybody's going to pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're not doing a billion dollars and you can't afford to have a team mm -hmm. and you know, we're your team, right? That's right. we're your team. Mm -hmm. We literally, as a co-op member, we literally work for you. Right. Um, and, and help you save and help you save money. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, most people don't have the ability to have people with an expertise in processing mm -hmm. on in the company payroll. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I get, to meet somebody in a smaller, medium-sized business mm -hmm. that has a person that oh, their their job is credit card processing, mm -hmm. right? Um, right. So that's what we that's the role we fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and because it's it is just a complicated process. Um, you know, it's it's ever changing. You know, there's there's so many options. Yeah, it's it, you you just don't have a person unless you really are doing a huge amount that specializes in that. Yeah, and and then you know. If I can, I like to talk a little bit about the future. Mm -hmm. um, as I said earlier, it's not going to get simpler. No. And people are going to start being able to pay with Venmo. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there are two or three competitors to Venmo and PayPal has their version of Venmo. And I, I actually have it, but I can't remember it. But Bank of America and a few other banks have a consortium. They have something that competes with Venmo. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, electronic wallet. Mm -hmm. Carrying, carrying a wallet around will become obsolete. Right. You know, your, your ID will be mm -hmm. on your wallet. All your mm -hmm. credit cards will be on your wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll use either And by wallet, like, you're meaning this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> on your phone. On your phone. Uh -huh. Every, mm -hmm. ev everything's going to be on a phone. Mm -hmm. no, one, no one's going to... Where do I have this thing here? No one's uh, going to carry this no around anymore. Right. You know, it just, it just not, mm -hmm. it's just not going to be worth it mm -hmm. to them to do that. And so it's going to become much more sophisticated mm -hmm. and there are lots of rules around fees. So, mm -hmm. you know, what here, I'll just share this with people. Um, if you have a debit card and a lot of people have debit cards mm -hmm. and they process the debit card, that debit card can be processed as a credit card. Right. Or, or as a debit card. Mm -hmm. If you process it as a debit card, mm -hmm. the rate to the merchant is like one third the rate mm -hmm. than if you process it as a credit card. Right. Right. So um, there's a point where it actually makes sense to have special software that tells you what it is. Mm -hmm. Now there's a, it, it's interesting. The top 10 banks are required to process it appropriately. Mm. All the other banks are not. They so can, they, they don't can choose. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. So banks make a lot of money on that. Mm -hmm. So when we start doing Venmo mm -hmm. and the younger generations, I study a lot about them because I got this book coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, the younger generation, interestingly, prefers debit. They prefer paying with the money they have. Right. Well, good I'm not for sure. them. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure why. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm saying is that when the time comes that you see mm -hmm. a lot more of that processing, your business has to be ready to do that. Right. It needs to mm -hmm. be able to accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big benefits of a company like Delta is mm -hmm. that we're going to be on top of that mm -hmm. stuff. We're going to be letting you know before those things happen. Right. Um, and I think there's going to also be a lot of options. You're starting mm -hmm. to see this now um, where you go to Amazon and some things will let you pay over payments. Mm -hmm. So it's with your credit card, it's five equal payments, it's six equal payments mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And merchants are going to use this as a tool to, to get business. Mm -hmm. You know, there's right. consumer credit mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. right now. And right now, consumer credit is a pretty good deal because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people like myself, I don't want to set up another credit line. Right. I don't yeah. want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I can, you know, for me, in my case, I can afford to just pay. Mm -hmm. But when I go on Amazon and I see five equal payments on my credit card, it costs me no more. Mm -hmm. I go, why not? Right. Yeah. And, you know, rightly or wrongly, 
I'm likely to buy a better product. Mm -hmm. So like on a, on a computer, mm -hmm. I might go, well, instead of right. buying the $900 one, I'll buy mm -hmm. the $1,500. Yeah, because, because I can spread it. it out and it's not costing anymore. There's no additional fees or charges yeah. or anything like that. So you're thinking, hey, you know. Yeah. So we have a product now called Split It, mm. where we can help people that want to do this now. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, it has not changed the world yet because mm -hmm. it's new, mm -hmm. um, but it is going to change the world. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another company called bread that has a, a very mini version of it hmm. and Amazon's doing it and, mm -hmm. and you're going to just start seeing more and more of it. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, when you do that as a merchant, um, how you do it is really important. So we enable merchants to do it and actually get paid all, all up front. Mm. Um, so you're assuming the risk, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, we aren't, but split, split right, it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, or they, you know, they can, you know, there's, there's a actually done right. There's actually no risk to the merchant. Mm. Um, because what the merchant does is get an approval for the mm -hmm. amount of the transaction mm -hmm. and every month they just take a part of the, the approval. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that there's no risk, but there's cash flow of implications. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, these are all areas where you need somebody's help and expertise. The other thing is, there's going to be a lot more transactions paid for business to business with credit cards. Mm -hmm. So it's just, why not earn the perks right. and why not get the extra time? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, in addition to what I do at Delta, I own a training company mm -hmm. and we allow vendors to pay with credit cards. Mm -hmm. Most don't. Right. But in time, mm -hmm. I, I know it's going to shift. Mm -hmm. Um, because the technology, and we offer this for our bigger clients, they can create what's called a one-time virtual credit card. Mm. So the credit card number is only good one time for mm -hmm. exactly what's owed to the merchant. It's mm. sent to the merchant mm -hmm. via an email. Mm -hmm. Only the merchant, only the business rather that you're sending it to can deposit it. So mm -hmm. it's totally safe. It's right. not like you're giving somebody mm -hmm. a credit card with a $200,000 limit on it. And giving them the number, mm -hmm. you're giving them a credit card number good only for that transaction, mm -hmm. and you know they're getting they're going to get uh, just like you do with a mm -hmm. regular credit card. They're going to get cash back, or they're going to get air miles. Mm -hmm. They're going to get a, an extra amount of time to pay, mm -hmm. and they're going to say, "Why wouldn't I do that?" Right. And the merchant's going to say, "I want people to do this because uh, I'm going to get more customers." Mm -hmm no differently than the, the stores do right. now. Um, so it can actually, you know, a joke, turn the, it can turn the payables department into a profit center. Because mm -hmm. literally, you can make more money in rebates using this uh, one-time virtual credit mm -hmm. card than you have to pay your entire payables department. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's totally safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think you're going to, in the future, see a mm -hmm. lot more Right. Uh, business to business transactions mm -hmm. via credit card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those things that, you know, as we've been saying, is very tricky. And, and, you know, because one of the things, as you were mentioning the virtual wallet, I have refrained from doing that for several things. First of all, I'm thinking, okay, what if my phone gets stolen? Well, there's now granted, you know, and, and, and they say, well, you would call and cancel everything. Well, my phone just got stolen. So how am I supposed to call? <laughs> um, <you know? laughs> I, mean, I always like it when they say, if your credit card is stolen, call a number on the back. Okay. If I had the number on the back, I'd have the card. Um, but, but yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's te technology, Deb, is interesting because just last night, because they're, you know, they're, we've got all of these protests, mm -hmm. and there's been unfortunately some vandalism. Mm -hmm. Someone broke into Apple stores and, right. and stole, mm -hmm. stole a bunch of phones and mm -hmm. iPads and computers, mm -hmm. and and none of them work mm -hmm. because they were never registered right. when they were right. sold. They weren't activated. Mm -hmm. They weren't activated. Mm -hmm. And like I, I do, mm -hmm. I do use my phone, and I, I like paying with my phone mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm very easy right but for someone for someone to use my phone um they would have to know my they'd have to duplicate my face right or your or know thumb. my or no or know my passcode mm -hmm. right so it's, it's pretty hard right. and the other thing is mm -hmm. if i'm using a credit card and this is the one thing about debit versus credit that people do not know 
if you use a credit card, the fraud, someone stealing your phone and using your phone, is at the risk of the credit card issuer. Right. Okay. Or mm -hmm. the processor. Mm -hmm. It's not at the risk of the individual. Mm -hmm. So if someone stole my phone mm -hmm. and they were able to somehow hack it and use my credit card, I wouldn't have to pay anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if I use a debit card, I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. And it, so it's a, uh, um, so although, you know, I think it's great people pay with debit cards, mm -hmm. that is one of the downsides of mm -hmm. debit card. Right. You know, and, and this is going to be a generation thing. Um, you know, there are going to be many people who, I mean, there are still people who, who just prefer to pay cash. Um, you know, they, they don't even trust credit cards, uh, you know, and, and, and you're always going to have to deal with those, but the majority will switch. And, you know, we mentioned at the start of the program, COVID, coronavirus, all those various things. This is going to be one of those things that I am assuming is going to become something that you know, we, we were saying, you know, is, is now part of having to deal with that going forward. You know, rather than getting in my purse, my wallet, getting out money that may or may not have been contaminated, um, you know, and who knows how long germs live on some of that stuff. People don't know, even with my credit card. I mean, you know, when I hand somebody my credit card, I think, what have they been touching? Where, are their, oh, yeah. where have their hands been? You know, if I could just wave my phone at something and make payment, that's going to be what people are going to start going towards, you know, and, and oh, yeah. so and, as you the know, vendor, you have before, to, prepare. a lot of people are going to need to buy that equipment. Right. Right. Yeah. The, the vendors have got to prepare for that. Yeah. Yeah. Let um, me, let me just share another thing though. And I mm -hmm. think this is somewhat about the uh, pandemic mm -hmm. is, you know, when business goes South, mm -hmm. people tend to take and reflect and say, how do I save cost? Right. Mm -hmm. So when business is good, they're thinking, oh, I can take my time and energy. Yeah, yeah whatever. Cost, I'm going to just like try to increase my business. So what I like to do is I like to get people to think about savings as if it was sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we could save someone at Delta $10,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? And they make on normally make a 5% profit margin. Mm -hmm. That's like we increase their sales by $200,000 a year. Right. Right. So when you convert cost savings to sales, mm -hmm. people get very excited by a $200,000 mm -hmm. increase in sales. Right. But somehow don't get so excited. Oh, we just say $5,000 mm -hmm. or $10,000. That's nice, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we save $10,000. Mm -hmm. Well, $200,000, that's a big number. Mm -hmm. But that's what it takes in business. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is easier to do. Mm -hmm. Take 10 minutes, call Delta, mm -hmm. send us some paperwork over, mm -hmm. maybe take 30 minutes to fill out a form and another 30 minutes to do the transaction. So let's just say an hour and a half of time mm -hmm. to save $10,000 a year mm -hmm. for multiple years, mm -hmm. not just one year, right? multiple years. So mm -hmm. let's just say for the sake of argument to make it easy, it's five years, 10,000, it's $50,000. Mm -hmm. So in total sales conversion, it's like a million dollars in extra mm -hmm. sales. Mm -hmm. So I challenge any of your listeners to tell me how they can make a million dollar sale mm -hmm. in an hour and a half, which is the amount of time it takes to switch, mm -hmm. to talk to us at Delta, because mm -hmm. we're doing the work for you, because we work for you. Right. I challenge anyone to tell me how they can make a million dollars in sales in an hour and a half. Right. Because that's the value mm -hmm. of making a switch. Mm -hmm. Right. And... And you've made it easier for your customers, you know, I mean, there's just, it's, so it's not just that, you know, that yes, it's oh, yeah. nice that you're oh, making yeah. that money, but the there's, money there's many other there's, things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's many other things. You've got a problem. If mm -hmm. something new comes out, we're on top of it mm -hmm. for you. I mean, there's mm -hmm. many reasons more than just the cost savings like mm -hmm. we discussed. Right. But I just, I, I just like people to think about it as sales. Mm -hmm. Right. Because people get excited about sales. Mm -hmm. I get excited about sales. I know. That's money. That's money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But, you know, if you can cut $10,000 a year, mm -hmm. it's all profit. All goes to the mm -hmm. bottom line. Right. Now, speaking of, of you know, Corona and p the pandemic and all that, and this may not pertain to you, but this just kind of popped into my, my brain, is the fact that now we have a lot of companies that are saying, okay, you don't have, you, you can get X product but you don't have to start payments for 60, 90, 
however many days. I mean, they're there. And, and so is that something that pertains? I mean, is that, is well, the, 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 um, um, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the product split, it has the ability to have the payment split start later. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So people could use split it to make mm -hmm. that kind of offer. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, as a merchant, you generally get an approval and you have 30 days to mm -hmm. actually process. So as a mm -hmm. merchant, you could do that. Um, you know, we're seeing this more on big ticket items. We're seeing right. this more Oh yeah. On... It has to be something fairly large or it's not yeah. worth doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, I just bought a car and they offered me 90 days before my first payment, mm -hmm. um, you know, as an incentive to buy, you know, as an incentive to buy the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, now's a really good time to buy a car. For several reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And we needed a car, so mm -hmm. we bought a car. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, you know, you look at consumer financing programs. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds. I mean, there's a furniture store here that almost always has a deal where you make 60 equal payments mm -hmm. over five years mm -hmm. to pay with no interest. Right. Okay, so I don't think credit cards are going to replicate that, mm -hmm. but it only makes sense that people are going to, you know, look at, look at, if you went in and you're, you're looking at stores and one store said, hey, uh, you know, buy $300 worth of clothes from us mm -hmm. and we'll let you pay $50 a month. You know, we'll divide by six mm -hmm. and then all the other stores you got to pay right away. Well, you know, why not take advantage of that payment plan? Mm -hmm. And maybe instead of buying one item, you're going to go buy two or th right. this is where I'm different. Mm -hmm. I don't like to shop. So for me, the idea that, oh, I'll just buy everything I need. Uh -huh. go it's whatever's buy. easiest. Well, mm -hmm. There's some people that just love to shop. And the mm -hmm. idea that they would buy a lot would mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, would be like, uh, oh, my God, that'll never mm -hmm. be. Um, but um, I do think that there are people that will make decisions based on, on, pricing methodologies over mm -hmm. credit cards. I think we're going to just see more and more mm -hmm. of that in time. Right. Um, it's and I think those bad. have been forced on us because of the pandemic. I think they were kind of there, but they've been forced yeah. on us and maybe escalated. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably a ton cheaper. I know it's a ton cheaper to use a product like Split It that we mm -hmm. offer than it is to give someone a 10% discount. Mm hmm Right. And I do think you're going to see a lot of discounting. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that, you know, and like, if you look at my car, how much it really cost them to give me 90 days to make that first mm -hmm. payment. Right. Not a lot. Right. And they still are getting that full amount. I mean, you know, that's, that's, yeah. I think one of the things people don't understand, they didn't get 60, 90, 30, day, whatever free. They still owe that. <laughs> yeah. They just well, are paying I bought, it later. I bought, from, I bought from an Acura dealership. Mm -hmm. The financing through Acura of America. Mm -hmm. I, I got to yeah. imagine Acura of America right now is probably borrowing at two percent, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, ninety days is three months. It's a fourth of a year. It's probably mm -hmm. cost them a half a percent mm -hmm. to give me ninety days. Right, right. And but Aren't more you? importantly, they're moving inventory. I mean, oh, yeah. and, and that's the thing. I mean, that's what, because I actually saw somebody that said, why on earth would you want to buy a car now? I don't understand. And, and it's like, well, not only are you going to get probably, you know, the, 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 the extension, you know, whether it's 90 days free or in a, you know, a whole nother year. I mean, I saw some things where they're financing 0% for seven years. I mean, who keeps a car for seven years anymore? But anyhow, um, my wife, I know, we yeah, my husband, for, we yep. have for 10 years. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, and, and, but, but yeah, they, they have got to move that inventory because there are so many costs associated with those cars just sitting on well, their Well, they're paying lot. interest on the car anyhow, right? They're, oh, the yeah. car's being financed mm -hmm. one way or the other. Right. Um, better, better move them. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, it is a good time to buy a car. Mm -hmm. we, oh, yeah. We don't really yeah. You can, you it, can I, negotiate. And, and that's going to happen with a variety of things. Now, can you walk into Walmart and negotiate? No. <laughs> you know? my, but, my negotiation started with them offering me $7,500 off on a car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because that, that was their incentive packages. Mm -hmm. I had a loyalty package because mm -hmm. I was a previous customer, 1500 They have a $6,000 mm -hmm. discount, mm -hmm. and then you start negotiating. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and we're going to sell cars. They should be, this should be the car show. Yeah, 
I know, I know. You know, and, 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 you know, my thought process is on a lot of things you can negotiate on some things. No, don't bother. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, and, and the, the, the least they're going to say is no, <laughs> you know, and then you can choose either buy with them or go to another vendor. I mean, you know, and, and, and that's the way with, you know, even if you're the small business person who's got, you know, one thing that you're selling, you can choose to negotiate with that or, you know, the, your clients can go elsewhere. I mean, you know, there's, there's well, and, you know, and what you're saying is interesting because that's essentially what we do with processing. Mm -hmm. So we go out, we get your data mm -hmm. and you, so part of the thing is we get your data. Everyone needs your data because mm -hmm. you can't, without being able to tell them what your average ticket is, what your monthly volume is and all mm -hmm. of those things, you can't really, you can't really negotiate. Mm -hmm. With most people that do credit cards, they just look at that data, they see what you're paying, and then they think, okay, I'll offer you just as enough mm -hmm. savings that you'll switch, right? even though I could offer you more. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we get an agreement, if we can, we look at it, we give them an estimate, we're gonna say, mm -hmm. save you 30%, 40%, whatever it is. But that's not where we stop, mm -hmm. that's where we start. Then right. you say, okay, we're gonna join the co-op, you can mm -hmm. represent us. Mm -hmm. We then go out and look at and vet Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of other, right. uh, you know, a whole bunch of mm -hmm. processors. That, oh, I, I like to call it, we get the processors fighting over you. Yeah, which is right? in because, essence what's happening. Mm -hmm. Right, to get you the lowest possible Competing price. for your business. Yes, competing for your business. And, you know, who and a regular business, A, knows enough processors mm -hmm. to do that, right. has the time to do that, and even knows how to negotiate mm -hmm. all the intricacies of the mm -hmm. things you need to negotiate. Right. Yeah, because again, many of them think bank, PayPal, Stripe, and the guy you met at your net networking event. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy at your networking event is probably going to be cheaper than the first three you mentioned. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and, and nicer. You know, he, he might yeah. actually remember your name. <laughs> so, <laughs> well... Oh my gosh, Evan, you know, we've only got a, a couple minutes left and, and this really has been just fascinating to me. Um, you know, and, and I think it's something that, you know, a, as we've been saying, people are going to think more and more about, I think, especially post pandemic, because people are going to, you know, there's going to be, I, we went to, to some place the other day and they point blank refused to accept cash. I mean, there was a sign at the door, no cash. Oh, yeah, accepted. Yeah, no, but restaurants near me take out, won't take cash. They don't yeah. want to touch it. Oh yeah, you know, and and so people are going to have to start using credit cards if they haven't, and you know, and and if you have, you still you know, need to check out. Are you getting the best deal? Um, you know, and and so it it makes sense to to investigate all of that. Uh, you know, it's it, post pandemic is going to be interesting. Um, you know, I I think there's going to be you know, quite a few changes that we're not even going to even start seeing for six months because, you know, for one thing, we don't exactly know where we are in the curve, um, you know, and, and well, you know, in, in my remaining minutes here, I would encourage merchants that are not online to get online mm -hmm. um, because the people online right now have done pretty well during this mm -hmm. pandemic. Right. And, you know, if you have a regular business, mm -hmm. you know, regular store, mm -hmm. um, it's not that hard today mm -hmm. to set up and uh, create an online store. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. at least with an online store. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I wanted to buy a sofa. We were able to go online and buy a sofa mm -hmm. easily through a Wayfair, mm -hmm. but we wanted to buy locally. Mm. And, you know, we ended up having a call and they sent mm -hmm. us pictures via email, mm -hmm. and, you know, all of that. They could have had an online store. Right. It's not that mm -hmm. it's not that hard to have an mm -hmm. online store today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but and here's the thing. You've got to be very careful. If you use Shopify, mm -hmm. which is a good platform, mm -hmm. they require you to process their credit cards through them mm. or you have to pay them one percent of your sales not to use their processing. Ah, because they're losing that fee. Right. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, there are some people it's worth paying the 1% mm -hmm. to go elsewhere, <laughs> to go elsewhere. There are other products that I'll plug them. WooCommerce is a really good one. Mm -hmm. They'll let you use anybody's credit card. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you need to really think about when you choose these platforms, which mm -hmm. ones do you want to have and which mm -hmm. ones, um, you know, what, what will those real costs are? Because that's a pretty major hidden cost. Right. Right. Um, but it's not, 
Yeah, look, at, there's some products that are really hard. My sister's in the uh, custom kitchen business. Hmm. It'd be pretty hmm. hard to sell a custom kitchen. Right. Um, she can uh, start the process, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's got a great website, mm -hmm. Adream Kitchens. I'll give her a plug. Um, dot com. But uh, she's got, you know, and, and uh, during the pandemic, you know, she used Zoom mm -hmm. as a way to show yep. people product yep. and things mm -hmm. like that because mm -hmm. she was in the midst of a lot mm -hmm. of transactions. Right. Yeah. She can um, hold up samples and yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you should have an online strategy if you don't, if you can. You know, your mm -hmm. business may not be suited. Right. for an online mm -hmm. online strategy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, clearly the restaurants that succeeded were the ones that were already set up mm -hmm. with the food delivery services right. and, and things, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And, um, and you know, I, I don't think that, you know, I'm sure the restaurants that didn't weren't thinking, well, I don't think there'll ever be a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think they were just right. never- It's not going to last all that long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, uh, you know, it's an interesting world. And, you know, as I like to say, when it's interesting, the best thing to do is to talk to somebody that really knows what mm -hmm. they're talking about. Right. Yeah. And that's what our yeah. co-op does. Yeah. Because we can't be, as a small business owner, expected to know everything. Um, you know, we, we often tend to try to think we do because people are going to look bad at us if we don't know everything. But, you know, that's why we hire lawyers. That's why we hire CPAs. I mean, you know, we can't and don't know all of those things. So. How do they reach you and find you and talk to you, Evan? You know, that's an outstanding question. <laughs> the, one of the most important ones we can ask, of course. Uh, we have a website, mm -hmm. uh, deltapaymentsystems.com. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the website, there is a contact us. Mm -hmm. uh, we just put up a brand new website. So we're super excited about it. Cool. Uh, if they want to reach me, mm -hmm. my phone number is... 781-820-7609. I do like talking to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, they can feel free to do that or go directly to my deltapayments.com. Cool. I love it. I love it. Well, in the Excuse last me. remaining minute, do you have any final thoughts for us? Yeah, I'll give you a final thought. Because we've been talking about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The people that have a positive attitude and look for innovation are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And the people that hunker down and, and sit back and uh, let the world go by are less likely to succeed. Yep. The world will go by. Yeah. Well, I have been having an absolutely fascinating time talking with Evan Hackle. You know, please make sure to check out his information. It's great information. There's all sorts of good resources there. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.